All right, problem 16, we got um, a match pairs t-test is not an appropriate way to analyze data from which of the following. So we got to figure out which of these match pairs t-test would not work for. Okay, so um, it's kind of just to review what a, ma what a match pairs, pairs t-test, um, you know, really is used for. It's it's essentially when you um want to like test you know, you want to test, you know, some, um, some, you want, you want to test the effects of something, maybe like you're testing some drug, um, maybe some, you know, some energy drink. So you want to test this, does this energy drink make a difference? Um, the thing is, is that when you're testing, you know, something like that, um, there's going to be a lot of confounding variables. So you want to make sure that you compare your, um, your effects on people that are very alike. Um, so like I say, you want, you want to, you want to test, um, two groups of people. Um, you want to, you want, you want to account for factors, like make sure, try to keep them the same age, make sure they're both like, um, regular coffee drinkers, uh, make sure, you know, they're like they're the same weight because we know those, those can be factors when you're testing, you know, drugs or, you know, um, you know, the energy drinks or stuff like that. So a match pairs T-test is when you're testing something among a pair of individuals that are alike. Um, the pair itself could also just be the, the, the person. Like you can test yourself, uh, maybe like one week you take, um, one week you take caffeine and then next week you don't. And you compare those results and how you, whatever, how you felt or, or whatever you're trying to measure. So you, you can, you can be your own pair. Um, so let's look at this. Let's look to see what would not work. So we got measurements of annual income taken before and after a two-year training course for a random sample of 100 people took the course. Um, no, I mean, this is this is a good one. This is a, you're taking um, before and after for, you know, each each person. So each person's acting like their own pair, and that's, that's fine in this case. Uh, measurements of annual income for each twin for 100 randomly selected pair. No, because again, each twin, you know, we, they're alike. Each pair, or each pair of twins. They're 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 again like they're acting as their own um they're acting as their own pair. That that's fine. Measurements of annual income for both for, for both individuals and pairs form by, formed by matching 100 people from state A and 100 people from state B based on level of education. Well, the thing is you're breaking them up based on level of education. So you're 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 trying to find similar individuals. So that's okay. Those pairs would be okay to test. Um, D measurements of annual income for both individuals and pairs form by assigning 100 people to pairs at random. Okay, so then, um, so you're, you're not accounting for the, some of the factors here. You're just you're just making pairs at random. Um, so this this wouldn't this wouldn't be this wouldn't this wouldn't be a good test to do. This wouldn't work for these situations. Um, and then for E, like you can again, E, E would be okay because um, you're um, if you're recording the annual income for both spouses, so again, it would make sense that um, each you know, each you know pair, you know each 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 you know whether um, husband and wife um would you know would be you know have similar you know characteristics among themselves, um. So, so um, that that factor would be possible. Um, Seventeen. The pulse rate for each person in a sample of twenty men and twenty women was reported. The box plot below summarized the pulse rates for the men and women in the sample. Okay, so um, looks like the pulse rates. Um. For men, so these stars, remember, these are at, these are like outliers. We got a couple of outliers for the men, um, and then the women. This may be a little higher overall. Now let's see. Um, which of these statements in the sample must be true? So this is testing that you know how to read your box plots. There are more people between the first and third quartiles for women than there are between the first and third quartiles for men. Okay, well, each group has 20 people. 
each group there's there's 20 people in the men group and the and the women group and there's five in each of those 25 percentiles there's five in here five in this little spot five in there and another five in there and women five in here between the median and two three between the median and two one between the minimum and two one so um they're not there's not, there's not even more people because because they're both equal sized groups it's, the, the, the um range is maybe different but the number of people is the same so it's not going to be a the person with the lowest pulse rate is a woman no because it's a man <laughs> you can see these outliers these count these are outliers they still count um those those marks are just a way to represent outliers usually the rule will be one more than 1.5 um, IQR units away from Q1 or Q3, above Q3 or below Q1. See, at least half of the women had higher pulse rates than three fourths of the men. So half of the women would be here and said had more than three fourths of the men. Like, no, because this is only, this is only lining up like. The, this last quartile this is definitely not this is this, this is definitely not going to be 75 percent of the total this is, this, i think it's just there to trick you because they're make sure that you're not thinking of 75 as like the third quartile of three all right and then let's see um more than half of the men had lower pulse rates than three-fourths of the women Hold on a second. I just, I just confused myself right now. It is C. I just, I, I, I did that backwards, or I thought of that backwards. Had higher pulse. Yes. Yeah, so they have higher pulse rates than three fourths of the, of the of men because they're. Right. Senses are thought. Yeah. Senses are working. But um, okay. So let me re-explain that. I don't explain that backwards. So um. Three fourths of the so the um so the the median pulse rate for women is right here on this line, you know, around seventy five. But seventy five percent of the men, their their pulse rates lie from from about seventy to down here. This is 70, and these three parts, these the, this interval, this interval, and this interval. So seventy five percent of the men. Are definitely you can see clearly that at least seventy five percent of the men, because there's a little more right here, are below the the, the median pulse rate for women or fit the fifty percentile for women. So it is, um, so it is C C would be nice. Sorry about that. Eighteen. Um, an airline claims that the mean flight time between city X and city Y is 38 minutes. After taking many flights, a local business group believes that the claim is unrealistic and that the actual mean flight time is greater than 38 minutes. If the group conducts a study to investigate this belief, which of the following hypotheses should be tested? Okay, so we're looking at it, we're looking at we're looking at, um, we're looking at means. So the null hypothesis, remember, is that there's no difference. And we're always talking about population parameter, not sample. The, the sample we can always prove because we get all the data in the sample. So right off the bat, um, the, the hypothesis test has to be going with, um, with um, the population, not the sample. So it's not going to be A, B, or C. So, so the null hypothesis is that they're claiming that the true mean or mu is 38, HO, that's HO, versus the alternative. That the mean is, so they're saying the actual mean is greater than 38. So we're saying that, that the population mean or mu is going to be greater than 38. 
making sure you know that you know your inequality symbols. So then it's going to be E. But yeah, that one's pretty clear, straightforward. I think they're really just testing that you know your symbols. And number 19. Ali, or Ali, is it Ali or Ali? Um, surveyed 200 students and recorded the eye color and gender of each student. Of the 80 male students that were surveyed, 60 had brown eyes. And if eye color and gender are dependent, how many female students surveyed would you expect that brown eyes? Okay, so let's um let's take a little table, male, female. Let's put up brown brown eyes. We'll just say not brown. Um, and we're, there's 200 total students. So it's 200 down here. 60 of the 80, 60 of the 80 males, so 80 total males, 60 of the 80 total males had brown eyes. So that means that 20 of them didn't. And since they have to add up to 200, the total number of females is 120. So first make sure we know that. A total number of females is gonna be 120. Now, when we're saying that um, events are independent, um, in a in a real life context or the way you want to think about it in real life, you're saying that you know that there's no association between you know these two things. In this case, there's no association between gender and eye color, meaning that knowing someone knowing their gender is not going to help you at all predict um, what their eye color is. So that means that the percentage of males with brown eyes and the percentage of females with brown eyes have to be the same. Because again, knowing the gender is not gonna help you. Like it's not gonna help you guess. So the, the only way that would make sense is if their percentages are the same. So we wanna look at what percent of males have brown eyes. We look at 60 over 80. So then this is 75% of males have brown eyes. Let me just put that here, I don't want to confuse me. 75% of males have brown eyes. So you want to basically have 75% of females have to have brown eyes as well. So you take 75% of 120. So 75% of 120 is just gonna be 90. You can even multiply 0.75 by 120. Just to be certain. So the 90 of the females will have will, will have brown eyes. The answer is D. And number 20, we got the National Health Center reported that the proportion of students with elevated blood pressure is 0.15. The principal of a local high school believes the proportion of students in, this, in the school with elevated blood pressure is greater than 0.15. If, if a large sample is used, a large random sample is used, which of the following is the most appropriate test to investigate the principal belief? Well, this is kind of pretty straightforward. I mean, I, I don't know what they're trying to get at. I mean, it, it's just a proportion. It's, it's just going to be a Test for proportion um, because you're just looking at um, it says the proportion of students with elevated blood pressure is 115. So you want to basically test, you know, is the is the proportion of you know is P at you know the, is the proportion of the, the boys higher than 115? Yeah, so it's just it's just going to be A. Well, there's two. All right, so I hope that helps.